Hey folks, Jonathan here. We're back and uh, got a machete and a AT Pro uh, Garrett metal detector. We're going to see if we can do a little detecting around here, at least where I'm going to do the road at. Now, I know there's going to be all kinds of signals because there's a lot of metal everywhere. We're going to see if we can find the bolts before we come in here, you know, to, to smooth out. Hopefully them bolts are here. Uh, Price-wise, you're looking at seventy to eighty dollars, I think, per bolt. Maybe a little more than that. But uh, we're going to try to find them. And uh, if we do, we do. If we don't, we'll just probably have to make them. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and get started. See what we can find. We'll move on from there. All right, folks. We've metal detected. Metal detected. Found all kinds of crap. It was just that crap. Did not find any bolts. I feel certain that they're not here. So, they could be in the water. I don't know that yet. We'll figure that out. Whew, I'm out of breath. Uh, got a few questions I want to answer here. Uh, this is Babbitt. This is not an insert that you would buy and put in. You would actually have the crankshaft in there. You would dam the both sides up and actually pour the Babbitt in. Now, Babbitt is a a lead tin material that's harder than lead but softer than tin. Now, uh, it can be reused and that is why any little piece of it like this, when I find it, I save it. And it can be remelted and uh, reused. But, but I want to apologize for not making that more clear when I, when I was doing this. And if you notice, this has got alignment back and forth on it. And you can see where they had packed concrete up under it to get it up higher. I don't think I'd have done that. I would have used steel for shims like a you know big plate. But you know that's I understand why they done it. And uh, anyway, you know we've got better stuff to to measure with and stuff now. But you can see they put looks like there's concrete around the uh, bolts or the holes so they couldn't move in the bolts. So that's probably why that one's not off there yet. So we have to pick up and I'm probably prying. Uh, looks like I was guessing with that dent in the end, it was probably hit with a hammer too. So we'll have to fight that off. It looks like they stopped. That's about where they stopped at. Just taking that off. Uh, and the other bolts, like I said, they're not going to be hard to get off. Might be kind of hard to get out. I uh, haven't looked them over really good. We do have a Bud Light bottle. Oh, let me see. I don't know what they've done here. They may have put concrete in them too. So. Yeah, you get some pressure up on them and try and beat and everything. Now this plate, this is a heavy plate. Now this is a cast plate. I, I figured that out. Uh, it looks like the exhaust must have been off on it from where it mounted. And as you can see, they they drilled it. It looks like they might have torched it, but they moved the pipe over. As you can see, the linkage that's missing. We've been missing the piece here, the end over there, uh, the one that goes from here. Of course that needs to come down to here and it's the ends that are missing and they're missing because they were made out of brass like that one there's a big chunk of brass why they didn't take this one i don't know it looks like you got the nut off and just couldn't get it out so that's been welded up but we can make more of these they don't look like yeah you know, if they're cast they they've done a really good job i guess they probably are but uh we can cast them uh i've done brass and bronze and copper, you know, around 1900 degrees. That's not a problem to do with my smelter. And uh, uh, something you don't never like seeing. I don't know what that's off of. There's the head. So this is a 14 inch piston, uh, 36 inch stroke. So three foot stroke, 14 inch piston, 10 foot flywheels, uh, they're 19 inches wide. Uh, they don't list the horsepower, but I think around 175, possibly 200 horsepower. I think it ran around 85 uh, RPM, which is not uh, very fast, but that's why it's not a lot of horsepower. You know, horsepower is how much work gets done in a certain amount of time. Torque is the twisting motion. So you can have torque without horsepower, but you can't have horsepower without torque. So, for instance, if I'm turning on this handle, and let's say it's stuck, but I'm turning on it hard, which is right, it is stuck and I'm turning hard, okay? I'm putting torque on it, 
but it's not moving. So I'm making torque, but I'm not making horsepower. Now, the amount of work getting done was zero, even though I was pulling on it. So a steam engine, the difference between it and a gas engine is this thing has 100% torque from zero RPMs if the piston's in the right spot. So if the piston's you know, just below top dead center and you put pressure on it, it's gonna have the same amount of torque at zero RPMs pushing off as it would have if it was running at you know the, the full max 80 RPMs. So that's why the crankshaft's seven inches, because the torque on these are just you know just crazy. And I, I wouldn't even guess at the torque, but you know it's in the I'd say it's in the thousands. Okay, so if you're running 85 RPM or 80 RPM and you got a flywheel that's 10 foot diameter and 10 foot times pi 3.14 you know would be uh, over 30 feet so you're looking at a 30 feet radius so if you went 30 feet times the 85 so that's how many feet per minute uh, it gets up there because of the diameter so the 10 foot diameter so anyway what I'm getting at is the steam is powerful and it's powerful at zero one rpm whatever it's 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 strong so you got torque you don't have as much horsepower uh, but some of us like torque. Uh, some people like horsepower. I like them both, but I, you know, torque's, torque's king in my book. So, cordless valve assemblies. Okay, it goes in, it twists. Um, basically what would happen was, is just say these are the intakes up top, that's the exhaust down bottom, and that one and the one at the other end. So, and this is just gonna be a simple explanation and we'll go back through it later when I, you know, it, okay, I'm not gonna say that when I, do this because this is supposed to be a stationary unit just to look at but anyway let's go on with it uh, okay so this valve would open that valve would be closed that valve would open that one would be closed so this one open that bottom one down there open so what's happening is it's putting steam pressure in through this pipe it's coming through here it's hitting the top of the piston and it's pushing the piston down and everything that's on the bottom side of the piston is getting pushed out through that valve and through that hole at the bottom Okay, once it gets to the bottom, that valve closes, this one opens, this one closes, this one opens. So the pressure goes in the back side of the piston on top, pushes it back, and everything gets pushed out of this one that was in this cylinder, and it goes out the bottom. So basically this is just rocking back and forth, and it's opening and closing valves. I mean, there's four valves. That's a cordless valve. You know, they make slide valves. Uh, if anybody watched the steam engine I built out of the Myers water pump, and if I can remember, I'll put a link in the description here of the final video of it. You can go back and watch me build it if you'd like. The slide valve system is not nearly as efficient as this system. And this is really adjustable when you can get it dialed in really, you know, good. Slide valve is more forgiving, I guess. Uh, but you, you'll get to see what a slide valve is. It's pretty simple. It just goes back and forth. And uh, just works through ports. And it's pretty, pretty simple. But, uh... Okay, so more repairs, uh, old repairs. I don't mind repairs. You know, a lot of people would not like them, but I, I have a lot of respect for the men that done that and respect for the man that done that. Didn't get to meet him, but, you know, we'll meet him through his work he done. How about that? He's a good man. Fix the steam engine. So, uh, anyway, I'm going to get out of here. I think with the next video, or not the next video, but... In this video, I'm gonna go ahead and get my skid steer down here and go ahead and get to playing with this. I can see now that spring's wide open, so we're not gonna be able to stop that spring. This water's gonna be here. So we're gonna come in here and see if we can get the water just to divert that way a little bit. We don't wanna stop the water. We don't want anything like that. I mean, we're not trying to affect anything. Uh, you know, we want, we're want we not building a pond. So we just wanna divert the water enough to get this out of here. And then uh, we'll, we'll let it go back to flowing all at once. But, uh, my understanding and doing from the knife the concrete ends at the end of that pier but i think it goes out and around i think that's why this is holding so much water and there's concrete connecting these two but i've seen frogs jumping in here this water's been here for a long time and it's nothing recent but now this water was not here when the building was here so i don't know if the spring got changed i don't know what happened something there's something different to make it do this but anyway uh I don't think there's a water line busted up there. <laughs> you know, it's possible, but you never know. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, skedaddle out of here and 
you should the next frame should be me hopefully with a skid steer down here getting ready to start smoothing some stuff out oh 17 foot long uh, I forgot to tell you that I measured it from that end to that end is what we got 17 foot that's not bad Okay, folks, we're heading back over to the steam engine this morning. Uh, got a hold of the water department and found out which water department was involved with it because there was actually two, because one's for the little town there, and I guess it intermingles with the county. So, anyway, we're going to see if they get over there, uh, let them know where it was, and I didn't have an address, so they actually connected me to one of the, the workers there, and he knew exactly what I was talking about, so evidently he had either been there before or, you know, had to uh, service that area before, so we're going to, uh, we're going to see what they're, if they're happen to be there working or what they're doing, but uh, hopefully they'll get that fixed so this thing will get dried out, but at least we know what was causing it now, and hopefully if they can get it stopped, I can, it'll help me out a whole lot anyway. All right, let's see what it looks like. Well, looky here. So they came to fix the water line and uh, they mowed down here for me. Can you believe that? Super good guys. So they're working on the, uh, oh, they're all the way through. So they're working on the water line now. They said they think it's a six inch line, so let's see how it goes. Uh, I wouldn't expect them to have an army over there, but they, uh, they got right on that. They've, uh, I guess that's a right away for them right there so they're going to go ahead and get some more cleared off like they're doing and uh get in there and get that thing fixed i mean i'm sure it'll be done today because they uh there was probably 10 or 15 guys there and you know six or eight trucks so they're they're not playing around but i was glad that they uh they cleared down there for me that uh they didn't have to do that but i sure appreciate them doing it that bush hog so uh we got a, a little clearance down to it. I tell you what, now they're not playing around. There's two trucks there, tractor with a bush hog, there's a truck there, there's a truck there loaded, that had a little track hoe on it. We got a truck for dirt. We got a big vacuum truck over there sucking it up. I don't know how they're doing it, if they're sucking the dirt out or what they're doing, but, or maybe sucking the mud up. I may walk over that way, but it sure done me good. folks so they had a uh, six inch main there and what had happened was there was a service line coming off it I don't know if it was one and a half inch two inch uh, that was going evidently down to that steam engine and it was a lead pipe and it had busted under the ground or over the years somehow and uh, or a fitting on the end of it was rusted off or something but anyway it was running wide open and that was the the reason that we had the leak and so they've got the they've got that taken care of now. They're filling the hole in. Uh, they have uh, got it dry. You know, got it where the water's not running down there anymore. And super super group of guys, man. They they liked what I was doing with the you know saving the steam engine and and was offering to help any way they could. They uh, they sure helped me out. Jumped right on there and got that taken care of. And uh, it's a, a big thumbs up to them. All right, folks. They got everything done. It's been about a half a day. All the water lines fixed. So. You see where they took care of the problem and skedaddled. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
no more water running down the hill anyway. So, see what it looks like down here. So we just got a little bit to do up here. See how long it takes for this to dry out. We can deal with it now. It's just sitting water now instead of running water. But unfortunately this is a low area, lowest area. So we might need to pump this out. Depending on how big a hurry I'm in. So be nice to maybe scrape some of that dirt off. Get over top of that. Maybe get some of that deer. Well, I don't want to mess with that tree, the big tree. And that is a cottonwood. We figured that out. Anyway. All right. All right, looks like the uh, water guys left me a little present here. Jawbone bone off something. Horse, maybe? I don't know. All right, so... Got the wrecker here. We're going to at least try to get this bearing plate up. Which might be fun. But we'll see what happens here. And uh, see if we can get over it and hook to it. And hopefully it'll come. Don't know. This is going to be the start of it anyway. And then we may move over and try to get the base up on this end. And just loose some. And uh, before we come around to this side. So we're going to go ahead and at least get started with this. We'll see how this works out. All right. because you don't know how hard you want to pull. You know, it's not a small part now. I mean, it's pretty heavy. But we can get it out of here, no problem. All right. 